still some more coming in. Yeah, so, okay, so we have an uh, interesting splitted audience here in this workshop. Um, but quite expected, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Um, so more or less half are active on TikTok, either by primarily watching videos um, or some of you um, even by creating videos. And we also see that the group of those that are already active on TikTok um, are mainly interested, mainly using the platform for entertainment. Um, so to um, to get an idea of what is happening there, and um, uh, maybe also uh, to 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 get an idea about the latest trends, dances, and moves. But um, that we also have a significant part of the participants that um, are using TikTok for research purposes primarily some for information and um, also other. Um, uh, if you want to share um, what other kind of um, purposes um, there are, feel free to write in the chat and always also to write your comments and questions and everything in the chat so that we um, can learn um, from each other. Um, I stopped the sharing um, and Tom continues with the presentation. And then we will briefly um, introduce the agenda for today's workshop. Um, so we will start with a brief introduction what serious TikTok is or what, what we think that serious TikTok is and how um, this impacts civic education on TikTok. Um, then we will have a session with breakout rooms where we ask you to uh, watch together some TikTok videos which we prepared and discuss particular features and aesthetics and the topics which are raised in these videos. Um, then we will we'll get back to the um, um, uh, to the uh, forum here and introduce a series of modes that we defined in order to better understand um, how um, uh, 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 it's possible to engage with complex social issues on TikTok. And um, uh, then we will have another breakout room session where we try to um, relate the videos which we discussed before um, to these modes. And then we uh, conclude uh, the discussion, uh, the workshop with a concluding discussion. And now I hand over to Tom. Great, thanks. So starting right, uh, delving right into TikTok. So um, I guess this is how most of you know TikTok, right? Uh, you open up the app and then you have a rain of dazzling videos with many features hashtags, colorful backgrounds, and many interactive elements, uh, which actually makes TikTok such a ride for its, use, for, uh, for its users. So um, we're going to see how those dazzling and mesmerizing videos are actually an uh, amazing way uh, to educate about serious topics. Um, so we come and ask how and why TikTok is so popular. And um, we actually claim that this is uh, the description of this of the, of the platform popularity is in its unique infrastructure, uh, described as a virtual playground. What actually started as a platform that offers users to post videos of themselves doing lip sync to songs grew very fast into this uh, creative canvas of self-made short looping videos, uh, presenting a performative language of dance routine, science, comedy, fantasy, audiovisual memes, and you name it. So um, the result of, uh, of this TikTok's virtual playground turned uh, um, actually turned TikTok into a generational habitat for Gen Z users, uh, which is highly corresponding with their dominant characteristics, uh, being recognized as the first true online generation that mediates life through a screen. Gen Z users or Zoomers, as you maybe know them, uh, have a strong tendency for expressiveness, a desire to create a high level of social awarenesses, and it's all tied together in their short span of attention. Um, so TikTok's designer matched the app's infrastructure uh, to those habits, encouraging users to incorporate an endless menu of social technical features. Uh, which actually allows um, much more than just content creation as those features encode users' videos with profound meaning, as you will see in, um, uh, later on in the workshop, and supporting them to be the most creative uh, you can be, according to TikTok's vision. 
Um, so this unique relationship between users and a platform transformed TikTok in less than a year from a mostly entertaining environment into an interest-based platform for sharing information about politics, se uh, se sexuality, identity, history, and other topics for the purpose of peer-to-peer -peer education, community building, and creation of affinity spaces. So um, this development was accompanied by the rise of a format that we describe as serious TikTok. In such videos, users actually communicate social political affairs in engaging ways through digital storytelling while harnessing the platform's features, aesthetics, and dialects allowing them to playfully unpack complex topics, contextualize and provide information. And uh, before elaborating on their activity on TikTok, um, let's position some context. Play. TikTok is a, it's, it's a playful platform. TikTok offers space for playful humans as it envelops various human activities driven by a ludic attitude liberates users to tell their stories without adhering to a traditional visual styles, narratives, and online culture. So in other words, TikTok extends our normative frameworks, revises moral and ethical questions on how we address serious topics like hate speech, trauma, suffering, religion, war, and many more. Um, display um, as a fundamental human activity is embedded in TikTok's experimental audiovisual playground, where users can choose how to shape their videos using in-camera speed control, image composites, um, collaborative uh, split screens, filter text, and many more functions, as already said. Um, so the platform actually pushes users to use features as play tools to experiment with different combination and capitalize on users' desire to be algorithmic, algorithmically visible. So in this reign of serious topics, uh, we see many of TikTok's worlds demonstrating users' desire to deal with much more than dances and beauty tutorials. Um, so we see a very uh, impressive list of serious topics here on TikTok. Sorry, the list is going on and on. Many topics, as you can see. So um, we will focus more on those worlds, uh, TikTok worlds. But as part of our interactive part, we are intrigued by your contribution to this extended list. Um, and to this theoretical lens of seriousness and playfulness, we want to also add the idea of civic education uh, as the idea of being educated outside of the formal institutions and allowing people to unpredictably encounter units of knowledge that they might not acquire, acquire elsewhere. So it is a challenging framework that has been heavily studied in relation to social media platforms, but not yet on TikTok. So when done right, civic education can actually bring greater political knowledge, interest, and activation among students and increases civic skills. So we will see more about that as we move along. Um, so as we shall see um, in our practical part of this workshop, um, um, the ac academia and academia researchers from around the world are already following in the footsteps of their students and taking TikTok to share knowledge. So this trend is sparking academic attention already with researchers looking at the different ways academ academics, educators, and scholarly communicates um, um, using the technical features of the app to construct pure learning. So you can see here, um, a nice quote that already is already confessing and saying that TikTok provides a fun place to create new forms of accessible learning shared outside of classrooms, textbooks, and conference halls. So in this context that we uh, briefly uh, walked you through, we want you to think critically with us. 
um, how does TikTok's vernacular of trend, aesthetics, and dialects, um, as you will see now in our uh, interactive part, can actually ignite peer-to-peer -peer knowledge and, and, and uh, encourage education? How can we think beyond this conservative limits of education? Which roles can TikTok play? Uh, uh, which roles can TikTok play in formal and informal learning? And how can learners and teachers work with TikTok within and outside of the educational system? So, um, enough talking, and let's play with TikTok. Yeah, um, I'm posting now um, the link to a Padlet um, uh, shared uh, kind of um, uh, workspace uh, in the chat. So please open it. Um, uh, we have um, added some videos um, to this um, uh, to this palette uh, and assigned them to five groups um, and um, uh, and kindly ask you uh, in breakout rooms to watch um, the three videos assigned to your group and discuss how far they can be example they, they can be considered as being dealing with serious topics, what kind of topics, how they address these topics and engage with them, and, and also how which kind of aesthetics or specific features or modes um, uh, are used here. You can, um, I will um, uh, shortly um, share my screen. If you can stop sharing for a moment, um, Tom, then I can show you how the Padlet looks like. Um, and then you can see that each group has videos assigned. Um, you see here through the arrows, you can double click on the videos and watch them. You can, uh, each one of you watch them on your computer or you can share screens. Tom, are we able to, to, to allow screen sharing for everyone? Um, um, I'm not sure, but um, maybe we so, can ask. The... Yeah, if not, then, um, then, then, then you have the possibility, each one has the possibility to work on uh, no, I see. Um, I see that we someone wrote that we have yes. Uh, so okay. the screen Good. sharing is on for everyone. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. And you can also, if you decide that you want to add some kind of keywords or aspects or features to the video, you can just double click and um, uh, uh, and um, add another kind of um, note here. And you can also by using uh, by clicking these three dots and connect with another post. Uh, then connect this and um, relate the specific terms to the video. So you feel free to use this um, uh, Padlet really as, um, as, as a workspace, so to say, um, and, and document your discussions. Great. So I have to say that uh, you already expressed very uh, thought-provoking comments about what you saw and I think that we're going to now address in our examples. So you have a already have a good intuition about serious TikToks, that's for sure. Um, okay, so um, I'm gonna share my screen. And... Um, maybe maybe first, is there any anything you discussed in your groups which you would like to share? Um, there was already one question in the comments now asking about the effectiveness of the learn, of learning outcome um, and studies dealing with that. Um, uh, yeah, any any other aspects which you would would like to share from from uh, from your discussions before we continue? Yeah, we had a question in our group. Um, we were group two that asked, "What is the actual data you can collect from TikTok?" None of us are collecting it right now, so we just want to know: is it just the videos or other things? Um, there are still a lot of kind of tools in development and uh, people found different kind of um, workarounds. Um, so of course you can do in-app searches for, um, for hashtags, for, um, for um, uh, uh, specific Sound. keywords, um, but it is very difficult to get a kind of comprehensive um, idea of what is on TikTok, especially because the, the, the platform works differently than other platforms. Um, uh, you can, um, uh, TikTok has um, a new kind of feature, which is for journalists and also can be used uh, for researchers, um, how to, um, to follow specific um, uh, hashtags uh, or see trending hashtags and also see uh, um, additional analytics. 
um, uh, you can of course um, you can download many of the videos um, sometimes directly in the in the app sometimes with um, with other um, uh, apps that help with that and there are also some um, uh, um, more or less built features by 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 researchers that um, that collect uh, videos that um, try to to train um, accounts to behave certain in a certain way and learn about specific topics um, yeah so there there are there are still yeah many many methods and none of it is perfect so to say yes and i will share some uh, literature about the effectiveness uh, of the learning outcomes for sure and also um i would say that there isn't uh i mean there is little research about the the impact of those videos um not many researchers are actually dealing with uh users perceptions and understanding of 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 the effect on the users themselves so it's still um a quite uh an, an an understudied angle and also i would say that it's quite comfortable to that the fact that tiktok has this sound pages that allows you to actually follow uh um, according to a specific sound you can see a variety of videos using this specific sound same for hashtags you can just go to in a hashtag you have a hashtag page and then you can you can have to see all videos associated with a certain hashtag and it's all in the same page you can just scroll and and see those manually so um in order i mean we find that uh, analyzing manually tiktoks is still the most fruitful way to understand the many layers of 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 a, of a specific video um and and but of course we will be happy happy after you know in the q a and other uh in the the rest of our time to speak more about how to collect data and, and those ethical perspectives um yeah, um, maybe we have uh, Matthew with another question. And yeah, so this is quick. It's just, is there like um, a good article or how to on like the latest stuff you can do with TikTok? Because it's just confusing. Everything, you know, every every platform's its own its mm -hmm. own beast. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, for sure. I will. Well, well Tobias will show you the different types of the of different modes of serious TikToks. I will send already in the chat uh, some crucial uh, uh, papers about TikTok methods. Right? Okay. So um, we will have discovered. Okay. So Great. then so, let's continue and yeah. hopefully get back to some of the questions. In the meantime, uh, yeah, as as you already kind of assumed, um, uh, we are we we are still mainly have a uh, qualitative approach, uh, and try by um, by kind of um, doing a kind of ethnographic visit to TikTok and kind of moving through um, uh, our for you pages that already kind of are learned how to be interested in particular topics we are interested in. Um, uh, to understand um, uh, what we call modes of serious TikTok. Um, so by watching um, uh, uh, videos um, on a variety of social and political topics, we tried to identify um, uh, different um, uh, categories, different forms of addressing, different aesthetic strategies um, that are of course overlapping in many cases and sometimes also uh, more than one mode is used in the video. Um, but this we see as a very particular element of TikTok uh, language um, that we that, that they are very complex, um, multi-layered, uh, and of course, as was discussed in some of your groups already, very short. So usually a TikTok video has to be watched more than once, uh, which is of course also in uh, in the interest of the platform and also of the algorithm in order to award um, videos that are watched uh, several times um, to be more uh, to be spread it more widely um, uh, to other users and potential audiences um, uh, so so we we see that creators play with the possibility of, of uh, developing a loop so video ends and starts anew and we have it like a like a loop circle um, or that they use many layers like text and language and um, uh, 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 additional sources, uh, videos, and, and so on, uh, which make it necessary in order to really grasp everything to watch a video more than once. Um, uh, Tom, do we, do we start? So this is um, a series of modes which we already developed. Um, they are very different and, of course, sometimes 
um, fitting more to a specific um, uh, um, uh, topic. Um, you can already continue. Um, so um, a very popular um, mode um, for informative videos is the experiment. This is especially used in um, uh, science contexts, but we also see it sometimes in social um, uh, contexts. And um, uh, yeah, and, and it's usually really delving on the fact that uh, in an experiment, um, uh, you create curiosity, you have a hook, people want to learn and want to continue watching in order to get the clue, so to say. Um, and some um, uh, some TikTokers, especially science TikTokers, are using this very eloquently. Um, yeah, let's have a look. I wonder how many breaths it would take me to fill up this incredibly long plastic bag. Do you think there's any way I can fill this whole thing up with one breath? I bet you I can. Stay tuned to the end to see the real answer. But let me show you the standard way of filling this up. We'll take our breaths. One hardly did anything. There's 10. I'm not even halfway there and I'm ready to pass out. Is there perhaps a better way to do this? Let's see. Let me take all the air out of the boat. And now we're gonna use something called Bernoulli's Principle. We're gonna blow into the bag, but we're not gonna put our mouth right on the bag. And what happens there is as we blow in, surrounding air is pulled in as well to the low pressure area. This is Bernoulli's Principle. Firefighters know about this. We'll talk about that in a moment. So here we go, one big breath. Build up the whole tube. So I said firefighters use this too. If you ever wanna get the air out of your room, maybe it's uh, hot at night and it's the summer and you don't have an air conditioner, so you're using a fan, don't put the fan right in the window. Back the fan up just a little bit, and now it'll blow air out, but we'll also pull the surrounding air out with it. I love science. Have a great day. Yeah, you see, quite simple. Um, uh, and, and using the, the, the fact that TikTok is about performing in front of the camera. So, but the performance here is the performance of the experiment. And then you have additional layers. Uh, you have text uh, elements that structure the presentation and you have even additional sources like the graph but as you saw it's not about the graph yeah the graph is just a, another gimmick that is put there but it is especially about kind of the the performance so that's the experiment mode i wonder um uh, the most popular mode used in these kind of videos is the explanatory mode uh, so here tiktok uh, tiktokers are really kind of explaining specific topics issues um, try to give, argue, give present an argument to give information uh, and use TikTok really in the way of um, uh, uh, of, 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 of a multi-layered information tool. The Wall Street Journal just released an investigative report about TikTok's algorithm, in which they used a bunch of bots to suss it out. Most of what's here, I think, will not surprise you very much, but some of their findings connect very interestingly to things that we know about extreme behaviors on other platforms. So welcome to Tech Ethics class. <laughs> so one of their bots was programmed to watch videos about depression and sadness all the way through. And this didn't take long. Tucky 96's feed is a deluge of depressive content. 93% of videos shown to the account are about sadness or depression. You probably don't actually find this all that surprising. Maybe the speed at which it happened or the fact that it was only based on watching videos and not any other engagement. But they also pointed out that their more generalized bots also tended to head down into niches. And this point that they start making about rabbit holes is where I got kind of interested. Deep in the niche worlds of TikTok, users are more likely to encounter potentially harmful content that is less vetted by moderators and violates the app's terms of service. So the less views that a video has on TikTok, the less likely it is to have been vetted by human moderators and the less likely it is to have been reported by a bunch of people. So this is a really interesting point that the more niche down your feed gets, the more videos you see with less views, which means the more likely you are to encounter harmful, violating content. And this actually made me think of some research about Instagram. Content warning, I'm about to talk about some research about eating disorders. 
So in this study, they looked at what happened after Instagram banned certain. So um, uh, you will get all the videos um, in another Padlet uh, soon. So if you want to rewatch them, feel free. And um, uh, if you're interested to follow some of, uh, of the creators, um, I can uh, definitely recommend it. And here in the explanatory video, you see it's it's mainly about kind of the the, the voice and the explanation of the creator, who is usually also visible. Um, and um, a, a very popular feature here is the green screen um, that people um, uh, film themselves in uh, front of additional sources, screenshots, or even uh, academic papers um, uh, that will kind of um, uh, give a, 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 a yeah th th that will support the argument. And it's also possible that they sometimes engage with these uh, green screen sources by pointing uh, somewhere uh, or emphasizing something. The Wall Street um, close to it is the lecture um, mode, uh, which is even more um, something that is that is uh, typical for an academic science or teaching TikTok uh, scene, uh, while explanatory videos uh, are uh, also created by random users. The lecture um, uh, mode, in, in contrast to the explanatory mode, uh, really kind of follows a, a certain clear narrative and doesn't really explain a topic, but kind of sheds light on, for example, an historical phenomenon or uh, something like this. Another really great science um, uh, TikToker here. China's Grand Canal is one of the world's largest and oldest artificial waterways. Parts of it date back to 500 BC. And for 800 years, it facilitated transportation between Beijing and Hangzhou. By 1820, 126 million people lived in the provinces connected to it. This was 15% of the global population. Even Adam Smith mentioned it in his Wealth of Nations. However, starting in 1826, use of the Grand Canal started to decline because of cheaper passageway through the East China Sea. Expensive maintenance officially ended by the 1850s. As one would imagine, the counties closest to that canal witnessed increased social turmoil and rebellion. These social costs were not considered when the again i think you 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 got the point um and and really kind of here it is it is like like a lecture uh and the powerpoint is so to say integrated into the tiktok what you maybe notice is that tiktok is also still a lot about music um and this is often also the the, the biggest challenge for serious tiktoks what kind of music to use uh, how to avoid to be too stereotypical that might be already the case here uh, to talk about China and have this kind of music in the background, <clears throat> uh, how to use music that is appropriate <clears throat> for a certain topic. Um, yeah, so this is this is always a certain challenge, um, but also many TikTokers say that they have the feeling that the audience can better digest, especially kind of lecturing when there is this, this kind of background music that makes it easier to follow. China's grand. Criticism is um, a, a mode which we mainly reserved for art critics and um, um, uh, other kinds of um, uh, uh, kind of critically reviewing uh, uh, things. Um, yeah, so here is a good example for art criticism. How many times have you been to an art gallery, seen some paintings of bowls of fruit or nice flowers and thought, hmm, nah, not for me. Compared to other genres of art, still lives do tend to be ignored. Treated like something your grandma would have on her wall and not something exciting or important. For the past 10 weeks, I have been making videos about still life artworks from the Still National Still Life Award at Coffs Harbour Regional Art Gallery. And in today's final episode, I want to tell you why still lives matter, especially today. Throughout history, art has reflected the events that impact society. For medieval artists working during the Black Death, their worldview for understanding the disease that was ravaging Europe was religion. They depicted the death and the loss they were suffering as the work of the devil or as God's judgment of humanity. But for us today, living in the coronavirus pandemic, our perspective on our modern plague is far less biblical and far more introspective. As we've been forced Again, you see the uh, the significance of the green screen feature. Um, uh, sometimes uh, these things, uh, the, the green screen is more used in an illustrative way and sometimes it's a more engaging way. Um, uh, uh, and and what you also see is that, um, uh, that, that um, it is all about creating curiosity and creating certain hooks in order to, um, to, to keep people watching. How many times? Um, uh, uh, book talks or book reviews on TikTok is a very popular genre. We see it in, in many um, parts of the platform. 
and it became a, a genre in itself. Um, so book review is also a very typical mode um, of uh, serious TikToks. And instead of just kind of explaining the books or kind of, um, it is really, again, about adopting features that are typically TikTok, like for example, the lip sync um, element, um, but using it here as another layer that is, so to say, creating the comment. Um, uh, uh, and, and um, But the typical structure of book talks is really to show, present book covers and thereby kind of um, share this uh, with others. Um, the shout out is um, uh, uh, videos that um, that kind of um, uh, shed in, um, uh, attention to those parts of um, political, social science, um, uh, uh, scientific struggles and environments that are usually not kind of in the in the spotlight, um, and thereby kind of emphasize um, the, the the efforts of others, like here with this kind of COVID related video. Remember. Maybe you notice the Siri voice, uh, which is the only kind of artif artificial voice you can use as a feature on TikTok. And this is the way of kind of um, adding another voice or using another voice if the, if the TikTok creator doesn't want to share his or her voice, um, uh, uh, yeah, as well as, um, as the aesthetics of, of kind of music related slideshows that is already kind of honoring or commemorating um, uh, the people uh, of the shout out video. Remember. Um, for behind the scenes, um, we define videos that critically engage with particular um, uh, areas of, of research or um, uh, specific institutions uh, and reveal um, problems or challenges in these institutions. And you see, again, there is a lot of overlap between the modes we defined. And sometimes, Girl, like, so, okay, this could also be uh, be be, um, be part of, of the shout out um, uh, mode. Um, sarcasm and, I and irony is also um, a very typical way of uh, dealing with um, especially challenging topics, like, for example, anti-Semitism in this video. All right, get lost, all of you, you fired Guan Scran, get out of here, you moochers. That's right, keep moving! You know what? You know what? Yeah. Except you, you stay. And again, so it's the performative way, it's creating really kind of a, a small show, a, a, a small drama, um, uh, uh, in order to kind of um, uh, make fun and sarcastic, sarcastically criticize, uh, in that case, for example, anti Jewish stereotypes. And also important to mention that for for uh, TikTok users, the uh, this popular uh, language of humor and sarcasm and being cynical, this is the way to kind of like reclaim a lot of um, stereotypes and 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 deal with many of many issues that they have within specific community. For example, this example is the Jewish TikTok. So um, they're using this sarcastic language in order to combat uh, those stereotypes on TikTok. So this is a very popular way of young users to actually deal with hate speech on the platform, for example. Um, as we started with, uh, with uh, history and memory on TikTok, 
uh, we also uh, identified uh, what we call the commemorative mode. So people using TikTok in order to commemorate specific um, historical events, like in this uh, case, the Holocaust. Um, and again, it's it's the use of particular TikTok elements like the music, but also the way of manipulating the music, of using this as an aesthetic element in itself, um, uh, and also of um, uh, empower uh, empowering. Uh, through relating, for example, um, uh, to the past. Um, the most important aspect when we talk about um, TikTok and serious TikTok is that TikTok is a highly um, dialogic and responsive platform. So it's very much about kind of writing comments, reacting to comments with videos, using uh, features like Stitch, uh, when you kind of take a video from somebody else and then react with your own video or a duet, which shows yourself kind of watching, listening to another me video. Um, so the responsive um, aspect is very important. And this is an example for uh, a Stitch, right? Yeah. I can't seem to find the huge discrepancy between the Holocaust and abortion because thousands of innocent humans are- So let me explain the difference to you like a fucking two-year-old. The difference is that during the Holocaust, they killed living, breathing human beings who had memories, emotions, characteristics, interests, family members who loved them. They were conscious human beings that felt every ounce of pain inflicted on them. When the Nazis beat them to death, starved them, and did experiments on them like they were lab rats, they felt every ounce of that pain. On the other hand, you can make the case that a fetus is a potential life, but the fact is that they have not yet lived a life. They have no memories, they don't yet have the ability to make memories, they can't feel emotions, they don't have interests or character traits. And lastly, in most cases, they are not conscious human beings that can feel pain. They have no ability to understand what's happening to them. You are comparing the pain and murder of millions of people to a being that doesn't have consciousness and can't feel pain. So like, are you stupid? I can't seem the next um, mode uh, is what we call the visit mode. This is mainly used by institutions like um, museums or also memorials uh, where um, uh, the TikTokers, so to say, present specific objects or specific um, uh, space. And this space or places are in the center of the video and all the other features are usually uh, used only in support of creating this kind of distant access uh, to a specific, specific place. This is the card index where over a hundred thousand index cards were kept on the prisoners here in Neuengamme. Over 20,000 index cards from Neuengamme survive today, of which around 500 are on display here at the memorial. These cards have the prisoners number, profession and work commando to which they were assigned. This is... Um. TikTok, and you will see this in several of the modes we will present now, the last uh, modes, is like many other social media platforms, very much about kind of sharing insight into personal lives. And thereby, um, it, is, it is very close to what is usually called as media witnessing. So witnessing in, through, and, um, uh, uh, and, and by the media. And, um, uh, and we see that that TikTok is especially also used in order to witness contemporary events, atrocities. Um, uh, and in this case, uh, uh, this is a video which is related to the Ukraine, uh, to the Russian aggression, uh, aggression against Ukraine. And, um, uh, and, and we see that many TikTokers, or we saw that many TikTokers um, tried um, to, to share their experiences in that war um, uh, uh, through, through TikTok videos. <laughs> And again, it is all about creating attention, playing also with contrasts and with um, uh, with the expectations. Um, uh, and again, music, performance, small scenes, 
Um, we also see that many videos really have the structure of short films um, that that uh, that created a, a narration of, uh, from certain kind of um, uh, small incidents or moments. And also here, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, you always also you you raise this dissonance uh, in the breakout rooms, which we we see in a very kind of like a very uh, cheerful music and this kind of like a very um, uh, as we said at the beginning, this ludic attitude, right? This kind of like uh, people acting, uh, dancing, and and showing a very uh, uh, lighthearted situations, but actually exposing us to atrocities, right? And 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 exposing exposing us to this disaster. So this is exactly how this uh, dissonance comes to play here in those TikTok videos. So I'm just um, spinning back to that. A very particular form of witnessing on TikTok is what we call the testimony mode. Uh, and this is um, particularly interesting uh, that there were, for example, several um, Holocaust survivors that onboarded the platform, often with the help of their grand uh, and grand grandchildren, uh, and used this as another way of kind of sharing their story, but in form of very short snippets that dialogically react to questions and comments of other users and then kind of create a kind of virtual dialogue and a virtual testimony uh, out of it. Like in this case, Lily Ebert, uh, a 97 year old Holocaust survivor from Great Britain. Yeah, they were Nazi women in Auschwitz. And you know what? In a way, they could be sometimes even worse than the men. Many of these kind yes. of history related TikToks are also kind of shedding light on less kind of focused on aspects and more marginalized parts of history, which I think is also has a lot to do with the kind of community and the diverse communities and, uh, 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 and the kind of making visible uh, certain marginalized voices on, on the platform. Um, in the activating or mobilizing um, section, we um, we try to grasp um, uh, how TikTok is used um, by activists um, to create certain forms of political activism, political uh, mobilization. Uh, Tom uh, did some intense research about how the uh, uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict unfolded uh, on TikTok uh, and Palestinian creators and Israeli creators kind of used hashtags and TikTok videos in order kind of to, to mobilize and to, to, to kind of emphasize their particular narratives. So here we see a kind of Israeli mobilizing video in this, in this conflict at the last Gaza war a year, a year ago. I'm gonna stand up, take my people with me. Oh yes, please stand up, take your people with Away from all the tragedies We are sorry for the kids who got to bury Their lives and their families Where is the humanity? Oh, 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 oh. I will just mention in this case that uh, this, this mobilizing videos uh, are an interesting and uh, um, kind of like an interesting game or competition between two sides in the context of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict because this video was hijacked, so to say, by uh, the other side in order to try to uh, to win the visibility on TikTok, right? So this specific uh, Palestinian uh, um, user was trying to uh, to mobilize others to, to hijack the Israeli version in order to uh, have many circulated versions of this song on the on the TikToks for you page, the uh, the main the landing page of the platform. So that was a very uh, intense competition between the two sides here. Um, the it's the last one, right? Um, is a very popular trend um, on uh, TikTok, and again, it shows the the way of kind of using the platform for performance and self-performance and at the same time also adopting um, these particular um, uh, um, aesthetics and uh, um, of, of TikTok. Um, this was a very controversial um, trend, the so-called hashtag POV Holocaust challenge where um, young TikTokers kind of um, uh, embodied 
um, Holocaust victims um, and kind of approached um, um, uh, the, the public from from the by by kind of re-enacting um, uh, victims, kind of putting on um, uh, uh, makeup and, and 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 clothing and so on and so on. But what is really important here, and this is not to, not only limited to Holocaust-related TikToks, but we saw it for Black Lives Matters TikToks. We we saw it for COVID nineteen um, as uh, we we saw it in relation to to nine eleven. Um, to use this way of point of view perspective as a form of kind of um, shedding light and engaging people with um, with kind of uh, forms of, of distant suffering, so to say. Tom, I think we are running out of time a little bit. <laughs> yes, uh, I think we have just around 10 minutes, maybe less. Um, and we do have many questions in the chat that we want to address, of course. Um, just one question regarding time. Can someone indicate uh, from the organizers, how many, how much time do we exactly still have so we can know? Anyway, I think we have around 10 minutes. So we can either, um, okay, so we- I think yeah. maybe well, then we should do a concluding discussion, yeah. a concluding discussion and use mm -hmm. this really as a forum to answer or discuss yeah. some of the questions. Mm -hmm. I already mm -hmm. posted in the chat, uh, the, the another Padlet so that you have all the examples um, we showed um, and our original idea was also to go back to the first videos you watched and discuss a little bit how they match or maybe not match or transgress um, the modes. Um, that was also already one of the questions how we came up um, with uh, with these, these kind of modes. Um, and again, so it's really a kind of bottom up strategy by really watching videos uh, related to specific topics, uh, uh, trying to identify and group them in certain modes related to topics, and then also to see how this is kind of um, something that, that we find in so different areas, like what we looked at, Holocaust memory, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, uh, science, TikTok, religion on TikTok. Um, yeah, so, and that's, that's also where our examples come from, uh, following specific creators, uh, looking into, um, into, uh, into particular uh, hashtags, um, uh, yeah, and and kind of arranging our own for you pages accordingly. Yeah. Um, so the whole opposite of what what one of you described, um, uh, kind of uh, the, the uh, that we are usually kind of um, uh, following the serious TikTokers and uh, leaving the the entertaining uh, aside. Although I really must emphasize that it should not be the opposition serious versus entertaining because the best serious TikToks are entertaining um, and use really the, the very typical elements like Tom said, the playfulness, um, uh, the performance elements in order to create um, uh, attention and uh, awareness. And uh, yeah, and also um, I was uh, alerted that we have another, like we have 10 minutes. So let's, let's uh, take advantage uh, to your many thought-provoking questions. Um, and I think that one one specific question that was repetitive uh, is about the ethical considerations, right? Um, and uh, someone posted uh, air uh, guidelines. So yeah, and this is very helpful when it comes to kind of like understanding how to address those videos in an academic research. So once this information, when you collect this information, you have all the details, right? You have the username, you have the profile of the user, but of course, once it's kind of like going into um, this process of publishing and uh, uh, and once you are facilitating your data collection, so you choose to anonymize the, the, the name of the user. And uh, so once it's go, going into publication, 
uh, the reader don't really see uh, the username. So uh, for, uh, for example, in academic presentations, um, we do a fair use by showing those videos as those videos who were uh, publicly published in open, open profiles, which are not defined as public, as a private or closed profiles. So those are all open access videos that users are, are uploading to TikTok. But in a publication, there are usually this information is being anonymized. Um, and of course, feel free to unmute and comment to that. I mean, I'm just sharing from my experience about uh, when it comes to publish about TikTok. Um, um, any any more? Uh, I, I don't want to miss your important comments and questions, but you can also speak up and say uh, in your in your own voice, of course. Um, so please feel free. Just unmute. Yes. Um, so in terms of research ethics, when TikTok videos are used and anonymized, um, um, is it uh, considered uh, to be a public data? Um, because obviously in public space, anybody, anybody can see it. And in a, for the research context, and how does it work? So, um, again, so as part of your uh, evaluation process as a researcher, this is um, you have free access to this data, right? Because again, mm -hmm. that was kind of like defined as as public uh, public profile that is publicly and and you know for for the, for the for the people to watch and use and share. Uh, so you are doing that as part of your evaluation process of your data. Um, and again, once you go into a publication process, when it becomes an uh, academic publication, you, you're you doing what you can in order to anonymize and following specific guidelines like air guidelines, for example, um, that uh, are very clear in regarding to anonymization of usernames and, and, and even sometimes the faces. So you put, for example, when I, uh, I am going to publish about the Palestinian users. Um, all users are going to be published with um, with black squares on their eyes, so you won't be recognizing the users themselves, even in their face. Although it was published publicly, so yeah, lots of uh, ext extreme measure uh, of of ethics is considered here. Um, and also regarding collecting the data, um, someone asked in the chat. Um, Again, uh, you can use scrappers uh, like automatic, automatic scrapping of a specific, let's say, uh, specific videos uh, that are associated with an with an hashtag. You can scrap um, a big amount of videos uh, from a, this uh, automatic scrapper, which is usually uh, an extension to your Chrome, for example, and then you get a, an Excel sheet with many of those videos who are associated with a hashtag. So you can just go manually, link by link, and to see the video and to recognize interesting patterns and interesting uh, uh, themes um, inside of the, those links. So it's a, you can do it automatically with a scrapper, but then you can you just you need to use your hands scrolling one by one and seeing those videos. Uh, this is the best way to go to really unpack so many layers. Um, any more? I, I see you writing, but maybe to be as you you read some questions and you want to address or. Mm, I tried to address some some of the questions in in the chat. Um, yeah. Yeah. So about I, I, the yeah. whole kind of structure of TikTok. Um, so um, as as it was already mentioned, so um, TikTok is not available in China. Um, uh, Dujin is the, so to say the the, the equivalent uh, to TikTok in China. Um, uh, TikTok was developed by a Chinese uh, com uh, com uh, company, ByteDance, um, based also on a, another uh, app, Musically, which uh, which was an American um, app. And today, um, TikTok is an international company, and um, the whole kind of of, of from the TikTok data collection. Pro uh, security and whatever stuff is uh, done at the West Co American West Coast, Co uh, and they are split in different regional um, um, uh, sections. And at, we have a most mostly we are in touch with the Europe, with Europe, TikTok in Europe and with TikTok Germany and Israel, um, and 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 they build so to say their own security system and try and of course uh, have to apply to European data protection laws. Of course, with all the, the, the companies, you never know what actually they do with the data. 
The other thing that was mentioned, which I find really interesting is that TikTok maybe more than other platforms really um, created this curiosity about understanding the algorithm. Um, so this kind of myth of the algorithm is really something that is very prominent on TikTok and people really try to play with it and to sometimes cheat it or to use it in order to, to, to create more visibility. Um, uh, because as you know, so the whole structure is not that you kind of are, uh, are visible to your friends and followers, but that you can virtually kind of reach everyone um, if your video is distributed in a certain way. And of course, this also creates then what the, the, the problems and the dangers of certain rabbit holes also here. TikTok tried to renavigate. Um, so they are now also sometimes kind of adding in, in for you pages videos that do not fit in order to, to kind of get people out of a potential rabbit hole um, uh, and, and make it more diverse. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of debates, also the whole automated process. So we still don't know about ways of automated um, uh, video analysis on, on uh, TikTok and maybe match it to our modes. It would be really interesting, but our modes might be too complex uh, to really kind of do that automatically. Um, but of course, automatic moderation is something TikTok is doing. And we had several cases, um, for example, also in TikTok Germany, where they really failed with, uh, with all automated text to speech conversion and then kind of identified specific words um, in a wrong way because the 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 the, uh, the automated analysis was trained in English, but it was applied to German, and then suddenly words were indexed that were actually not problematic, and so on and so on. Um, yeah, so I I think it also shows a lot of failure of of the this idea you can kind of uh, understand. Uh, the content of a video purely automatically because it's really multi-layered. It's very creative. It's uh, there are always workarounds, uh, and 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 creators always try to find ways to not be blocked or not be um, be shadowed. And um, yeah, and 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 there is a constant struggle, so to say, between the algorithm and the creators. And I also think that uh, Tobias and I, uh, we try to show you a very specific um, performance on TikTok, which has, of course, as you saw, many manifestations, right, in different different topics. And um, so we wanted to spark some, uh, some, you know, some inspiration about those serious TikToks and to kind of like give you another way to think about it and maybe even to encourage you to think about it as a as a more educational um, uh, outcome or educational product and um, uh, I see how the discussion is gravitated of course naturally into this, those topics of moderation and ethical considerations and uh, we will be very very happy to share more of our experience with that because we are as as Tobias already said we wor we are working with TikTok Germany on specific um um, uh, Holocaust commemoration projects uh, on TikTok. So, um, of course, we will be happy. I wrote our emails and our Twitter handles. Uh, we will be happy to share uh, literature, relevant literature that I, I didn't, I, you requested some literature that I will be happy if you will follow these questions in an email or, or, or a DM. Um, uh, so we'll be happy to share the literature and to share uh, ethical guidelines for people who are, are curious about that. Uh, of course, I will be happy to share all the scrappers that I already know and used uh, when it comes to scrapping TikTok. Um, so uh, please, I don't want to leave you hanging with those questions you know, with no answers. So we will be very, very happy to communicate through Twitter or email. So please uh, use it. Um, and of course, um, sorry that we cannot cover everything about TikTok. We really try to kind of like just have a glimpse into the serious TikTok uh, world. Uh, so we do very, uh, we hope that you you have a certain takeaway from here. Um, and, and thank you for your uh, brilliant comments and, and smart questions. And we're looking forward to just keep answering those questions as much as we can. <laughs> Yes, thank you really very much for all these thought-provoking questions. And we we are looking forward to see, uh, to learn more about your research and to get in contact and, um, yeah, and follow this path to understand the strange world of TikTok better. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.